it's Fred here at Math and Engineering, and uh, we're going to solve a quick problem for you today, uh, solving a system of linear equation using Gaussian elimination with pivoting. So in this case, we're going to be using partial pivoting, and partial pivoting is uh, essentially it's just a way that a computer uses, uh, it's, it's a method a computer uses to solve a system of linear equation that uses less resources, essentially. So that's what we're going to be doing for you today. Uh, I'm not going to take too much time going through the, I'm just going to write down the solutions and then I'm going to explain to you along the way what we're, what we're doing. So let's get started. Okay, so we have a system of uh, three equations here. And uh, we're asked to solve the system using Gaussian elim elimination with partial pivoting and backward substitution. Okay, so the first step in this kind of problem is to go ahead and rewrite the matrix, uh, just rewriting it with the coefficients and the, uh, just the right side of the equations here. All right, so let's go ahead and write that over here. So we're going to have 1, negative 1, 1. Okay, so that's the notation we're going to use with this line here. 6, 1, negative 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4. So where the partial pivoting part comes in, okay, is first we're going to look at the first column here on the left, and we're going to look for the largest number in absolute value, okay? So it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. Take the absolute value of every number and find the largest one. So in that case, in this case, the uh, the largest number in this column is six. Okay, so we're just going to switch. We're going to take the the row that has the largest number here, and we're going to just move it to the top. That's the only thing that we have to do. Okay, so we're going to swap R two with R one, and it's good in an exam or a test situation to go ahead and write the uh, the steps that you're doing here with R two and R one, just so uh, you get full marks. Okay, so the second row goes to the top. So we're going to have negative 6, 1, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 2. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to eliminate the, uh, the, fir the second and the third terms in the first column. So we're going to eliminate this 1 and this 3. All right, and we're going to do that by um, multiplying r1 by some factor and then adding or subtracting it to the second and the third row. Okay, so because the second and the third uh, terms in this column are, you know, not 6, we're going to have to reduce 6 in some way by some fraction. So we're going to have to multiply r1 by some fraction. So, uh, as we can see, uh, this term here is 1, this is 6. We want to eliminate 1 using 6. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to need to multiply this in, uh, r1 by 1 over 6, obviously, and then we're going to need to add it to r2 in order to make this 0, right? So I'm just going to write an arrow down here, okay? So we're going to say r2 plus, and we can say 1 over 6 r1, okay? And that is going to, obviously, uh, cause this number to be 0, which is what we want. That's, that's the goal here, is to make these two terms 0. Let's look at the second term, sorry, the third term in the first uh, column. We have 3 here, that's half of negative 6. Uh, and a negative. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add half of r1. So we're going to say r3 plus 1 half r1. Okay, and that is, I'm just going to write down uh, the results for that. You don't want to see me calculate everything, obviously. This is just uh, to show you how to do these types of questions. Okay, so after performing these operations on this matrix, we have Okay, cool. So that's, uh, we're at this step now. Okay, we've made these two numbers zero. And what we're looking to do is we want to make these three numbers zero. Okay, so these three numbers, the bottom uh, left triangular portion of the matrix, we want all to be all zero. And then at that point, um, we'll be able to solve the system. So in order to accomplish that, we're going to need to make this term here zero, and then we're done. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we need to um, or take this value here, and we need to add or subtract some multiple of 3 over 2 in order to, you know, make, uh, make this term 0. So how do we do that? Well, this is the way I like to do it. Okay, we're going to say negative 5 over 6, okay? Okay, plus, and we'll say x, because we don't know what, uh, what multiple of 3 over 2 we need to add to 5 over 6 in order to make that 0. So we're going to make, make that x, and we're going to say x times 3 over 2 is equal to 0, okay? And we're just going to solve for x, and then once we solve for x, we're going to know exactly what it is that we need uh, to multiply this whole row by in order to make this term 0. Okay, so move the 5 over 6 to the other side. Right, 
And then we can go ahead and multiply by 2 and divide by 3. So x is equal to 10 over 6 times 3 is 18, okay, which is equal to 5 over 9. Okay, and so now that we know that our factor is 5 over 9, I'm just going to draw an arrow down here. And we can say that r3 plus um, 5 over 9, r2. Okay, and if we perform that row operation on this matrix here, I'm going to draw another arrow here, we should be left with the matrix negative 6. Okay, so we have the matrix in the form that we want, okay? And now we can perform backward substitution in order to solve the system. So uh, when, in, when we're performing backward substitution, we want to look for the row, which is going to be the, the final row here, that only has one variable that we can solve for, right? So we can solve for x3, okay? So we have x3, that's, uh, think of this as x1, x2, x3. It's kind of in this form here. And this is the coefficient of x3, okay? So if we just do it the long way here, we have 10 over 9 x3, okay? And that is equal to the other side of the equation. That's what this line denotes. It's 50 over 9, all right? So all we need to do in this case is just solve for x3. So we just need to divide both sides by 10 over 9, right? And uh, x3 is going to be equal to, in this case, 5. Perfect. So, okay, we solved the f uh, for x3, all right? And now we just need to solve for x2 and x1. So we're going to use the next uh, row here in order to solve for x2, because we know x3. There's two unknowns, but well, we, kn we know one of the unknowns. So we're just going to be solving for x3. Okay, so we'll just say this is uh, x3 here. Okay, solving for x2. Uh, I'll just write the equation out, and then I'll just give you the answer. And x2 is going to be 3 over 2x2 plus 1 half x3 equals 11 over 2. Okay, and if we go ahead and take this value and plug 5 into here, solve for x2. Okay, x2 is equal to 2. All right, perfect. And then for x1, I'm just going to write the equation out. Circle these here. x1 is going to be, so we're going to have negative 6x1 plus x2 minus x3 equals 3. Okay, we are going to plug x3 into here, x2 into here, okay, and solve for x1, and x1 is just going to simply negative 1. Okay, so we can say that the, uh, the, the, the solution to the system, okay, we'll just come back up here, we'll say solution, we can say x is equal to negative 1, 2, by transverse. And that's it. That's the solution. Very simple problem. Pretty much free marks on your midterm if you can uh, just remember this kind of process. And uh, make sure you don't make any mistakes uh, in terms of the absolute value over here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>